This museum is built on the premise that by understanding the past, you can better shape the future. Towards that end, the museum is doing its own work to make the ex its extensive collection of maps, photos, and other information on the Holocaust available as Google Earth Maps, letting our audiences see that history in a new way. Here, we're going to use the timeline feature that's built into Google Earth to see a progression of the opening of major camps during the Nazi era. Now remember, these are just a tiny fraction of the full amount of camps, which we, which we will be putting into the interface uh, over time. I'm going to play that for you. It starts in May 20th of 1933 and goes until uh, May 4th of 1945. As the war is won and the liberation of, the, of each camp occurs, uh, up until May 4th, 1945, which is the picture in time that you have right now, um, that, that, time, that picture in time is one day, May 5th, 1945, before the liberation of Mauthausen, which is why it's still on the map. Clicking on that opens up a balloon that leads to more information, rich content on the museum's website, and with links to its Holocaust encyclopedia, where, we, where we're going to translate that encyclopedia into many languages in the coming years. Other information available in the, in the interface include an encyclopedia, a new interface to our encyclopedia. We're clicking on geolocated camps and ghettos and other places, brings up parts brings up images and part of the text that you get to when you come to the website. I'm now going to ask Dawid Saleh to come up. Mr. Saleh came to the United States as a refugee in exile from Darfur. He has spoken at venues across the country to educate the public on genocide in Darfur and to mobilize an effective response that will bring peace and justice to the region and to prepare for Mr. Saleh's coming up here. I'm going to turn on an area in Darfur. It's close to the area where he comes from. Mr. Saleh? Good morning. Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, I would like to thank the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum, <coughs> excuse me, for its effort, <coughs> for its effort in fighting genocide and, in particular, for for the work it has done for my people in Darfur. I would like to thank Google Earth for recognizing that the people around the world need, need to see what the genocide looks like. Now I would like to share with you what genocide in Darfur feels like. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about numbers. It's about the people. People like my brothers and sisters who are still in Darfur, in internally displaced camps, and refugees came in Chad. My village, which I was born, is completely destroyed. It's a village that I born and raised, as I mentioned, that there is no running water in the house we have. There is no light. There is no way to even go to school. Even though it's not, it's not easy to even to mention the names, uh, if, even though it is on the map, for the fear that my family could be put in danger. We need people to understand what is happening. Is Sudan government and Arabs, as Arabs, 
killings, innocent children, women, and elders, and destroying African languages and culture completely out from Sudan. We need, we need President Bashir and other perpetrators to understand that they are being watched. The only way we can stop this is by informing, is by informing people about this genocide and this effort by the museums and Google Earth does this in a very little way. It makes it impossible to ignore what's happening in Darfur today. Let me say thank you for the media for covering this for Darfur. Our voice only comes through the media. We, we appreciate, and let me say thank you on behalf of the millions of Darfur and the refugees camp and around the world. Let me say thank you for the U.S. Holocaust Museums and Google Earth. Thank you very much. I welcome any questions.